Um, I think eventually the EU crew needs a new name because half of us are not from the EU. This is true.
Well, um, hello, friends. Um, welcome to our uh, second episode of uh, season two of uh, You Plays Delta Green. Um, Hi. We're going to go ahead and uh, uh, start with our normal thing. I got to change up the vibe, though. I like this, but it's not It's not Delta Green. We need terror. Terror all oh. the time. Hold on. I have the lowest health out of all of us. Oh, no. <laughs> I mean, I have oh, a yeah. feeling, but seeing okay. it right there in, in green and black is just, yeah. Yeah, there's yeah, a strong the chance the sanity. you're going to get one shot eventually, and it's uh, going to be And hilarious. the lowest willpower. I'm probably just going to lose an arm. Uh, excuse me? <laughs> I also like him... that I'm just, I'm just con on the, uh, on the stream over there. Uh, cool. Well, we're going to go ahead and jump in, y'all. Um, so, uh, go ahead and uh, introduce your name, your character, and today isn't so much an icebreaker question. <laughs> oh, damn it, you might, Glenn. Am I back? Am I back? You're back. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I want you guys to think of a time when you've just been utterly scared. And if you'd be so kind as to share that, that would be fun. I have no fear. That's fair. If you're, uh, if you don't have any fear, then you don't have any fear. So anybody, does anybody want to go first? Because uh, I can go I first. I can go maybe. first. Go ahead, Willie. Take it away, buddy. I was like 10 or 12 or something like that. And I was on a roller coaster with my older sister. And uh... it was like a... Like a, it was like a semi scary roller coaster, and um, we did it once, and I was like, "Okay, I want to get off." And then there was no line, so the conductor was like, "You want to go again, everyone?" And everyone was like, "Yeah!" So we went again, and I was like, "Oh no!" <laughs> and then he did it again. And I was like, "Yeah!" And I screamed, "No!" And at this time, I was like bawling my eyes out because I was oh, so scared. Really? And he did it that again. Sucks. Oh no! And my sister was just laughing, just having a good time, because like, you know, <laughs> and she's like, it's okay, it's fun. So, so then he did it again, and then he, oh. and then so we, so we're on number three now, and then we we went around again. And I'm still crying, and he's like, do you want to go again? And I'm like, crying really, loud. and I'm like, no. And he's like, okay, let's go. And so we did it again. Oh, and no it was way! I was terrified. Yeah, we did like four or five times. Dude, that's awful. And like, he could see me. And my older sister was like laughing with him because he was laughing too. And I was just like, oh my God. And that's a little Willie. That's, that's I know. so horrible. I was terrified. That's I was legitimately terrible. And, and crying. And it was just not having a good time. And I think back on it and I'm just like, oh, I was such a goober. You're not a goober. <laughs> and people are scared. They're scared. Oh, I know. No, I, I had every reason, but I just look back and I'm just like, that was kind of funny. I look well, back and I, I mean, I can see why, you know, my sister was laughing at me, but I can also see why, why, why would you laugh at me at that? It wasn't even that bad of a roller coaster. There was no loops or anything. It was just yeah. Like, was it your first coaster or? I don't know. Honestly, I can't tell He's you. blocked out all memory for roller coasters. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, I love roller coasters love, now. I, only yeah, one I he love remembers. roller coasters. Yeah. I love going on roller coasters now. But Me too. I, I don't know. Who would like to go next? Thank you, Willie. Yep. Sure. Hi, I'm Outlaw. I'm gonna do the other things that prankster asked for. I'm Outlaw. Um I'm playing Constance. And um so I don't remember how old it was. It was like it was a kid, like pre teen age and me and my mum my dad we were getting a train from someone i'm pretty sure i don't know coming back from some family or whatever and i was like i need to go to the toilet before we get on the train we had like 20 minutes to look at the train at this point and so i go to the bathroom and i go to leave and i can't open the door and i'm like banging on this door trying to open it for a good 10 minutes and i'm like terrified and oh. I'm, oh my god i'm gonna be stuck in here forever and then 10 minutes later some woman just walks in. I was trying to open a cupboard. <laughs> I was like, crying and I was trying to open a cupboard. 
Why do I not remember this? Because you hate me. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I was petrified though. I was like, I'm going to be stuck here forever. And we're not going to get the train home. And I'm hungry. And then some woman walked in and I was like, oh, Do you need help? What? Oh. What? That's awful. I'm so sorry. Who would uh who would like to go next? Thank you, Outlaw. I'll go. I'm not Irish, and I'm playing Bo. And I don't know if this I don't know if I was really like scared more than it was like adrenaline. Mm. But it was when I was um I think I was about 15, 15, 16, and I was on a plane going to Portugal. And um the turbulence was like crazy. Mm. Like crazy, crazy. Like the fucking whole cabin was like bouncing up and down, side to side. It was like proper mental. Wow. But I, no. I don't. I, I wasn't like. It wasn't like scariness more than it was <laughs> adrenaline because I, I I love like shit like that. Mm. But it was just like the fear of oh shit, is the plane going down? <laughs> It was just like that. It was that kind of thing, like the, like the, um, the, the little mask things come doing and everything. It was like it was like that bad. That's a legitimately scary thing. I would be freaking out. Yeah, it was it was a little crazy. <laughs> there was a lot of people on the on the plane that were crying. <laughs> I would be. I would. Have been I, I was just like, I was I was shaken, but I don't know if that was because I was scared or because I was, you know, because of the adrenaline or anything. I, I don't know, but I'm. I'm I like that kind of stuff because I'm weird. You can be weird. I'll allow yeah. it. Yeah, that's 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 my thing. All right. What do you think I can think of anyway that doesn't that's, involve the ocean? That's uh, that's spooky, <laughs> and the ocean is terrifying. The ocean sucks. <laughs> Am I the okay. only one that likes water? I mean, it's alright. I mean, I like the water. I, I, I like the ocean. Right. Yeah, as, as long as, as I can see, like, yeah. As long as I can see and touch a floor, I'm fine. Yeah. I don't want to be near any it, sea monsters. When it's murky and you can't see, is the worst. Yeah. No, I don't like that shit. I wouldn't go near. <laughs> and then it seaweed like touches your leg, and you don't know what it is. Ah! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so because of that, I've always got to wear wet shoes when I go in the ocean now. Because I just can't deal with it. <laughs> I don't blame you. See, I All tried right. that, but then I just get sand in it, and I'm like, oh, this is worse. Thank you, Irish. Um, Outlaw or be Aya or Vindo? I'll go. I'll leave Aya for last. Um, I'm Vindorian or Vindo, and I play Booch. Um, scariest thing was probably when... Probably when the kid was born. Mm. Like being in the room for the first time. And just like making sure everything is going to be okay and everybody's going to be fine and healthy. For sure. I remember that with my kiddo too. That was just like, oh. Yeah. Well, and they had like the. They didn't sleep for about three days. Because <laughs> they're like, all right, so here's the, you know. I've got the bag ready to go. I've got everything set. Like every time my wife tossed and turned in bed trying to get comfortable, I'm like, are you ready? Are you good? Okay. And we finally get to the hospital and the only thing they have is like one of those sleeper chairs. And I am six foot five, so I don't fit in a sleeper chair. So, yeah. Man, this guy complaining about a chair when, like, you know, someone was giving birth to your child. Whoa. <laughs> she had drugs. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> she had to carry that for nine They're not months. all there. Cut, cut. <clears throat> They're not all there. They're uh, cracked up to me. Trust me. I had all the drugs. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's a, uh... I mean, all the ones that they offered. All of them. Not all of the ones in the hospital. Jeez. That would have been weird. Brought it out on a little tray. I'll take that. I'll take that. Yeah. I'll take you, that. You want to try meth? <laughs> wow. I'll take it a la carte. What else you got? <laughs> you smell like That's weed. That's kind Come of here. what it was like, Come but here. not like that. It was like, okay, try that. Yeah. It, okay, that was, that. like, 
gas and air. It was great to start with. And then, like, nah, five minutes later, you're just like, it's just not cutting it now. What else you got? <laughs> Give me everything. Um, okay. Uh, um, I'm Ayanna. I want to take... And I'm playing Ava. And it's funny, because uh, same sort of thing, to be honest. The, the first day home with my little baby um because i was i've long labor and then i was only in hospital overnight and i'm gonna be honest she was a projectile vomity baby and that started <laughs> after we got home um and then that evening she wouldn't drink anything and it was it was scary as shit to be honest i thought i've only had this baby a day and it's gonna fucking die mm. <laughs> okay, I was being a little bit dramatic. I was in a lot of pain at the time, and you know, I haven't had that much sleep. And... But yeah, no, actually, having this whole life dependent on you is scary as shit. Good luck, Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Prank, pranks to you, muted, bud. I'm muted. Yeah. How about now? Oh, hey, hey, hey. I guess I accidentally hit my thumb button. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, I guess it's my turn. Uh, my name is uh, Prankster, and I'm your friendly neighborhood GM. Hello. Um, uh, scariest time I ever had was, I think, uh, do the, the one that comes to mind the first. We were, my dad took me to like a supermarket when we were like, when I was like five or six, um, and we just moved to this new area. So I guess it would have been about five, and it's Halloween. And so if you've ever been to uh, uh, one in the States, at least, they will take, like, those big 24 packs of Coke. And so sometimes they'll, like, make stuff out of it, like, you know, sculptures or or even, like, like a yeah, little Yeah, like big castle. towers and shit. Yeah. But yeah. This, this uh, supermarket managed to create an entire small haunted house out of these that you could actually <laughs> oh go God. into in the whole nine yards. Yeah, or maybe oh, that's wow. how I remember it. At the very least, the entrance was that. It could be that, you know, it got a bit more complex in the back. But so I was like, dad, dad. And it was the first haunted house I've ever seen in my life. And I thought, oh, this would be so cool. And so he's like, OK, go. And he's just kind of smiling, happy. At, <laughs> you know, look, looking down, looking down on me fondly as a, as this a, is a learning father moment. would pretty much. And I uh, went in and it was like spooky. You know, the lights got dark. There were some black lights. There was some smoke. And I was like, ooh, like little bats hanging from the ceiling. And I was like, oh. <laughs> and so I get to like maybe like the halfway point. And uh, a man dressed up as a clown in a demented clown mask jumped out and yelled at me with a knife. Oh, Jesus. And I screamed in his face and I ran <laughs> right out the entrance. Oh. <laughs> I was so scared. Um, and I will forever remember that as, ow, what the, f ow, I stabbed myself on something. Oh, shit, that's a needle. It's the cloud, he's going to get you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> he's been stalking me all these years. Uh, I was like, just waiting for you to get comfy. Time. Just waiting for me to what? Get comfy? <laughs> get comfy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Good thing, uh, good thing my murder will be broadcast on live stream. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we won't see him. He'll be in the he'll be in the, he'll be in the green seat. He's wearing a green seat. <laughs> it's awful. It's um, Prankster's new conspiracy theory. Man, you remember that time that Prankster got stabbed by Theresa May? That was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I miss Delta Green. <laughs> All right. Well, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, so that way we're not missing it for too long. Um, last week <clears throat> was the start of your mission. We did some downtime activities with you guys recovering, getting better at skills, a couple other things. Uh, but the focus was getting into this new mission. Um, you were all in the UK for your respective reasons, and you all got the summons, the call to take part in a night at the opera, another Delta Green op. Um, it has been called Operation... Iago, capital I-A-G-O. Um, the short of it is that you have been, uh, there's a Delta Green agent who has apparently committed suicide in a house um, at 37 Cellial Walk. Now, uh, this takes place in uh, 
Coventry? That's that's the name, right? No, Coventry? I uh, opened up... Uh -huh. yeah. I think that's what you said, yeah. I opened up everything but my notes uh, for today. So good times. Um, it's cool, and I still don't know where they are. Um, so you're in Coventry, uh, England, the UK, where this is going on. The odd thing about this is the man got obsessed with this house and it looks like he committed suicide with a straight razor. The thing that popped out to you though, was that this man um, apparently committed suicide in the same shape and manner as the previous person who died in this house, not 16 months ago. <clears throat> Her name. Boo, 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 boo. If you have her name, you could share it because I can't find it for whatever reason. Um, uh, I don't remember. What something really was. like spacing out. Actually, because I can't find my notes. Oh, you know what? Can you start with like a Y or something? It was Yasil something or yeah, 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 Amila is. I don't know. I have it written down. Yamila or something. Yamila. Yeah. There it is. I found it. God. I haven't got another name. Yeah, Yamila uh, is her name. She uh, committed suicide 16 months before in this uh, same exact house. Yamila Asari. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put it in roll 20 so our friends can see it uh, who are watching as well. So that way they can follow along maybe a bit better. Um, for those who do like, I believe I have a closed captioning app you can use if that's something that would be helpful as well. Yamala Arsari. Um, so this agent, Agent Donnelly, commits suicide in the master bedroom of 37 Celio Walk. Um, and it's literally the exact thing. Same place, um, in front of the mirrors, um, in this like master bedroom. Um, blood splatter. It looks like a bomb of blood exploded. Um, it's just awful and terrible. You're given a couple of options for things to look at. First off, you can go and uh, check out the green box, which they've suggested you do. That would be Agent uh, Cooper, who is your handler. And they give you two names to also uh, check out as well. Elizabeth Tucker and Emil Yarrow. You decide to go to the green box first, and there you find a ton of stuff. Two sawed-off shotguns, over 400 rounds of ammunition for the shotguns, Nikon cameras, burned photographs, apparently like deranged notes, and also a casket that seems to be rotting away. And when you open it up, it appears to be, and it's a small casket too, looks to be for a child. And that's because it, 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 it is. When you open it up, it is a small framed person. Now, granted, this happened over 60 years ago, so there's not really a smell. Um, it's just a rotted corpse at this point. That is where we left off. You guys are in this storage unit, which you have gained access to. You have uh, a number of the things, which I would suggest you can... Um, you could probably go ahead and uh, look up in, uh, in chat. But what I'm also going to do is create a note. So that way you can have access to those um, items that you found in the green box in a more uh, easy fashion. Uh, I should have done this sooner, honestly. But uh, I didn't think about it until this exact moment. I'm going to allow you guys to edit the note as well. Um, and then that way... You can um, uh, adjust things as you see fit. With that said, that is where we are. You guys are in the storage, uh, the storage unit, in a town not too far away from Coventry, and that is where we are. At this point, it's up to you guys to take it away and to tell me what you want to do next, and I will react. Um, I'm going to put that note contents of the green box in the bottom there and we'll start kind of making a folder for all these other pictures as well take it away guys 
So, I am, I'm totally thinking that we should take everything, including the shotguns. We're gonna shove them all in the back of the car. That's a move. That was a, that was a bold move. How are you gonna fit all of you in the back of a car with, you know, the mattresses and? Oh, I don't oh, mean right, the kind of open the mattress and the uh, and the sofa. You can leave stuff behind. Yeah, I mean, yeah we but we were going to take this this table to go junking, right? Yeah, for sure, bring a table. Cause, yeah, uh, we can check on that antique dealer to talk to. Is that the plan? Would you like to go visit the antique dealer next? Also, I would like to remind you, um, just because those are the avenues that I've given you doesn't don't feel um, pigeonholed. If there are mm -hmm. other ideas, other things you'd like to explore to try and investigate this, you're more than welcome to. Except for hacking. That one's off the table. <laughs> you can still <laughs> hack. Wow. So does anyone else have any other like avenues they may want to explore immediately? I think if that not, I have a is probably the best way. Well, this is where I have a question from two perspectives. One, Constance's, and second, mine. Constance, for covering ground, and mine, for the 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 the, the drama and the cinematicness of it. Do we want to split up? Split in the party this early? I love oh. jumping the scenes between them. It's so cool. The problem with that is we've only got one car. Yeah, and up and a bike. Like to, to over towards where we're going. So anyway. what you're saying is I'm on my own. No. <laughs> no. no. Pushing you out the movie already. already. We're not pushing you out. You didn't want to go with the car. What are you <laughs> we, we have well, cars back where we didn't. started. I <laughs> hey, it was a bit of a squeeze, okay? There was four of you in there. I would also remind you that there is the house itself for you to explore too. Yeah, we want to get some answers before I feel like we go we there. We want to cover some ground before we do. That. Yeah. <laughs> we may never leave. <laughs> um, is there anything for like this green box? That's the only like supplies we have because if this is like Booch came here for a pin expo, so he's not going to have his his normal equipment. Hmm. Sounds like a booch problem. Oh! Wow. <laughs> yeah, but this is your booch, so... Oh, I made like, is there a where, Like, is there somewhere we can go to be like, yeah, so... Um... <clears throat> Absolutely. Can you can... Um, if you... Um... There are things that you would have been able to have bring just like fit in your bag within reason. That's one. And then the other option is, again, within reason, you can purchase things um, that you would normally be able to. Right. But I'm pretty sure a Kevlar vest and a handgun are not in that. Guns are illegal in the UK. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, just walk around with a gun. <clears throat> Right. We're playing I'm this pretty game sure I wasn't. Mode. I wasn't the uh, the sky marshal on the plane. <laughs> so, <clears throat> I would tell you, it is illegal to possess most firearms without a yeah. license in the UK. It is a uh, very reasonable um, that. Uh, at the very least, um, I would think that bow would have some type of a license uh, yeah. to, to utilize some type of a firearm. Good for you, boy. Yeah. Now, with that said, the two All shotguns right. have their ser serial numbers rubbed off. So those are <laughs> clearly illegal. Are they like full size or are they like sawed offs? They're full size kind of Mossberg shotguns have? and with pistol grips and they okay. are um so they're they're sawed off. So they're not your hey, typical Frank. range. Frank, sorry, I got a question. Mm-hmm. 
can I like search or by sheer luck look if there's a maybe a tarp in the green box? <laughs> we said there was the thing was covered. Run me a the mattress check. was covered, right? Um, two plastic wrapped twin mattresses. Yeah, we take the plastic wrap off that. Just wrap it up real tight. Uh, luck check, success. There is a tarp in there. It's a tarp. So Bo's gonna, like, turn to the group and be like, what the fuck are we gonna do with the coffin? I think uh, it's probably maybe a it safe spit. To... But Thank also... God that, that, that unit is paid for and no one's gonna take this for a little yeah, while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Leave it right fucking there. Yeah, we can... I mean, I don't know, it is part of evidence. I do you think we should take it with us? No. So, in an effort to speed us up, <laughs> otherwise we'll get locked down in the minutia of things, um, I want to know, what are you taking? What are you leaving here? What are you doing next? Those are the three questions I need you to answer, and I'm going to give you three minutes to answer them. Okay, so we'll take, we'll take the lime for Willie. <laughs> Take the shovel, the gloves, the hat lamp, the uh, all the documentation. Couple, a couple of the yeah. containers for like fluids and stuff. Yeah, the cameras. Got the keys. Mm -hmm. The shotguns, the ammo. <laughs> okay, Do we really so want to bring them though. I tell you what, I have given you access to the note. So what I would like for you guys to do is to edit it. Uh, one of you. Why don't you highlight the items you're taking, and the uh, and the items that are not taken will be unhighlighted. You guys have two and a half say minutes this left. This is gonna fall to Bam and who's that uh, in? I'll do it. Okay. Oh, it wouldn't be the paper pusher? No, it's because they're now. the veterans. I'm the scholar. They're the veterans. Okay. So the they've table. got seniority. <laughs> taking the quick lime. Taking the shovels. Yeah. Gloves, take, hat yeah, we'll take the gloves, the hats. I'm gonna highlight the the empty containers, but probably wouldn't take all fourteen because that's a lot and they won't fit. There's I've got the keys. Things. I've got the photos. Fake okay. identities. Camera. Go ahead. Go ahead and place the items that you're taking in your inventory so that we know. Um, if you guys would like, if one of you will keep an inventory for the car, so that we know what items are in the car, and just like staying. Can we truck. have like another uh, another note thing for the car? Uh, yes, I can do that. I think that's a great idea. Because we should can call it the boot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we'll just put everything in the boot. Can we take the burned photos? Yeah, I just highlighted it. Okay. I think that are we to, like? I assume. We're not taking the mattresses and sofa beds. We're oh. taking, let's take the biohazard <laughs> containers. Yeah. You never know when they come in handy. Yeah, I was looking at the photos, so I, I would have pocketed those and took them with us. Yeah. Should we take the photo lens? Sure. Okay, okay. So there's a new camera. There. Uh, I've created a note, a new note. I've put it in your little note folder. It is called items mm -hmm. in the car. It is right after contents of the green box. Okay. Nice. You want me to just copy over the bigger bits that are yeah. in the car while you guys talk about what you want to do? 30 seconds left to make your decision about where you're going next. Wow. Uh, I, feel, I feel like the antique table to take it to the antique shop and get some information from there, I think. Yeah. Everyone down? I'm down. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. So you Unless guys can. There's something that you guys want me to do while you're doing that. Oh, you can go. Since I've got my own transport. Oh, that's right. You got your. You got hey, your little. I've got my own transport too. <laughs> motorcycle. It's just not physically here. <laughs> Is it a moped? I feel like it's a moped. No, she's cooler than that. <laughs> It's one of those mopeds that look like a, like a crouch rocket. All right, legit. <laughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, okay. Sorry, I'm just fixing Thank something you. on the stream really quick. 
Cool. Take the photos off the car because I'm taking things off. off. Okay. All sorry. right. I will allow you to continue to work on that. Um, it's not, um, you know, we'll, we'll get it done as, as soon as we can. All right. So you guys have decided to go talk to Elizabeth Tucker. Yeah, we make sure uh, we wait. lock up the, the green box, though. We Before we up. go anywhere, <laughs> I want to check on everyone. I want to take vitals. Oh, my God. Okay, sure. Go ahead and roll me for that. Actually, checking vitals, that's a simple thing. Every doctor knows how to do it. You're not under a stressful situation, so I'm not going to make you... I'm not going to make you roll that. And that'll be yeah. that'll be a good rule of thumb is if it's a stressful situation. Um, but you have like a 94 in, in medicine or a 93 or something like that. So he was hoping to get a 95. We just a few months ago, we just learned that we would get infected by some things. Now we're going to open up coffins. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bone. Come on, Linus. Do we really got to do this right now? What's nope. this about getting infected? But what? That's classified. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Taking needles in everyone. Taking I'll... their vitals. <laughs> I, just, I, just, I, I assume Bo's just used to this by now and she just like holds out her arm like really <laughs> sluggishly. <laughs> like Booch is definitely taking notes like make sure to find out about the other things. Try. Good luck try. with that. <laughs> <laughs> try, try. Note to self: make sure you know your partner's better. <laughs> um, <clears throat> are we good, Linus? Are we good. I know, prankster. Are we good? Yeah, you guys are good. If if you're ready to to move on, yeah. let's move on. We're good. Okay. Um, you make your way. Uh, back to Coventry <clears throat> and you're specifically looking for Elizabeth Tucker's business. She's an antique dealer after all. Uh, I think that's my kids just getting home. Give me just a second. Um, we'll give right you back. 30 seconds. He's got to hide his evidence for <laughs> oh. kids at home. Right. He can't let them see what he's done. <laughs> that's the real reason he has the green screen up. <laughs> like fucking line has been a been a, a good doctor. <laughs> What's that about? He's got experience. He knows. Got to tell him people we're infected. Go, we do it. <laughs> Get more detailed briefing. Wow, that is a uh, that was fascinating. This is literally the time my kids come home every day, three forty-five, and uh, so it was the UPS driver, and he just uh, dropped off um, some medication. Uh, just put it right at the doorstep. <laughs> wow, Back, package of medication. Wow, hey. good times. Yeah, uh, cool. All right, so. You guys are going to go visit um, Elizabeth Tucker. Now, you're already given her contact information by Agent Cooper. Um, and she has a uh, thriving business with an online web presence, which you would be able to find out pretty easily, Ava, uh, called uh, www.antiquetracker.com. Are you sure I would? You're just doing a Google search. <laughs> If it's just a Google it's search, like, con whatever. Constance can do Thanks. this. Yeah. Um, it's called uh, www.antiquetracker.com. That searches for lost family heirlooms, stolen antiques, and makes... Um, uh, that's kind of the business. <clears throat> um, you go to her place of business in Coventry, a small area. So I'm actually going to um, go ahead and move us back to the starting image just because I don't have an image for this at like this moment. <laughs> so on the drive over, I want to suggest that maybe the way we, we play this, we don't need to flash badges too prematurely. We can just go in and be like, hey, we moving. So we're getting rid of some stuff and um, asking about the local area. Like, 
that the, that weird house with the weird stories. Hmm? Like, are we moving into this area, or are we moving away from this area? Uh, into gives us like avenues to like ask her about about the area, you know. It's fair. Just keep trying to make sure I got all the stories straight. Before we do that, can can I just do a, another little Google search and see if there's any information on this antique table that we've picked up? Because it would be really embarrassing if we go into an antique dealer's and it turns out to be stolen or something. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Look at you using your thinky thingy. That's awesome. <laughs> Um, you know, I didn't realize there was this many dogs in the UK. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of dogs in the UK. They're <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> God dig dogs. It's okay, They're we just pulled up next to a pound, it's fine. <laughs> <clears throat> um, so, yeah, you were able to ascertain that uh, this this table just seems like kind of a normal antique table. It doesn't really seem to have a big story to it or anything like that. <clears throat> so why you sit there? So you make your way to the antique uh, store down in Coventry, England. Um, I imagine you guys come into a park, uh, red brick building, uh, the sign on the outside that says, you know, Antique Tracker by Elizabeth Tucker. And I should have mentioned this earlier, um, and it would have been communicated to you that this Elizabeth Tucker is a is a Delta Green friendly. Okay. And so what that means uh, for you, Vendo, is this is somebody who's worked with them before. They're not like an actual member or an agent like yourself, but they are kind of like an outside help. They lend their services every now They're and then. They're a consultant. Day. They're a consultant. I know another yeah. Della Green friendly that I'm pretty friendly with. Just say it. Yeah, you're very friendly with him now. <laughs> P-boy. <laughs> uh, so you walk into her antique shop, and I imagine, you know, little bell chimes on the door. You open it up. There's like a glass pane with kind of like the painted sign for the store. Walk in, <laughs> you know, like a, kind of like a, a hit of warmth hits you because it is raining. <clears throat> There's kind of like a low light in the middle of everything. You can see just shit everywhere. Your grandfather clocks, you know, lamps, uh, chess boards, chests, um, different furniture. You look at it and it doesn't seem like there's any rhyme or reason to the organization. But nonetheless, that's kind of what's going on. Um, a woman from the behind the counter um, welcomes you as you come in. And uh, she's not what you would expect to see. She's actually a um, she's a young, a, a, a attractive woman, not some like old crone in this antique shop. And she goes, uh, "Hello, hi. Um, how, how can I help you?" Gonna kind of push ahead, Constance. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, quick side question. Is there... Uh, ha, hmm. Dollar Green Friendlies. <laughs> okay. H how... Uh, so are like you wondering code how word to communicate? Or a phrase? Like, yeah. For instance, I don't even know if they know what the name Delta Green, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I, I don't want to get too bogged down in the weeds. Um, yeah. So I, I'm going to uh, assume as, as part of that yeah, if it was conveyed to you that she was a friendly, it probably would also be conveyed to you the way to kind of like open the conversation. So code word or, or what have you. We'll we'll say um, um, a night at yeah a night at the opera because that's that's you know often a, a phrase that's used in the Delta Green with it's agents. Like a opera. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, hi, hi ma'am. Yes, um, how can I help you? Well, we're just, we're just passing through the area, me and my, uh, hmm. my friends. Just, just, you know, last whole night at the opera tonight. See your eyes kind of, like, narrow. 
Hmm. Yeah. A, a, not, a night at the opera. Um, tell me, uh, what is the show you have tickets for? We'll say that that's kind of like the, the response. And um, the We're answer... We're going to see Wiki. Uh, the answer is oh, an no. opera. It's an opera called... Um, Um, the Baron's Last Breath. Wow, that's a cool one. Yeah, that's the one we're going to see. So you say that she she looks at you. She's like, yeah. ah. So <clears throat> we've communicated that, and she goes, "Yes. How can I help you, agents? We good to talk in here? Um, she will. Um." kind of go over to the phone maybe she doesn't she's not paranoid but she kind of knows the gist and so she will kind of go over to her phone and like unplug it um kind of does a, a look around she says i believe we're i believe we're fine but if you'd like to go into the back and share a cup of tea we we can absolutely do that oh my god yeah let's do yes. that let's do that 100 <laughs> percent so yeah, she invites you into her back um, and you see kind of a storage facility and uh, a bunch of antiques that have yet to be sorted. Um, maybe some like Do... sign, signs up that say, you know, different pieces of antiques and furniture that she's looking for uh, with names that are attached to it. Um, <clears throat> and then Do eventually... I see any cameras around? No, there's no camera. Okay. Well, I imagine that... Mm, she probably would have cameras like CCTV for her own protection, but I imagine she gets back there. She shows you it and like turns them off. Um, okay. uh, and, and she seems to be on the level. Right, Pooch cool. is like in his head trying to figure out what the sorting system is and is like writing down <laughs> notes on how to make it better and more organized. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I have my own system. All right. He's going to like pull his notepad a little bit closer then. So she, um, <laughs> she brews a cup of tea, um, for everybody. Um, you guys kind of sit around in a, a, in this area in the back. That's clearly kind of like a, for, she's really the only employee. Um, uh, but nonetheless, uh, looks like to be kind of like an employee, like sit area or her office, something like that. But, uh, you sit there, you all have a cup of tea in hand. Um, and she looks at you and she just says, so how can I be of assistance? Um, have you ever met a man called Arthur Donnelly? Arthur Donnelly. I cannot say I have. I, are you talking about the man who committed suicide in the paper the other day? That is exactly who I'm talking about. Yeah. So I'm assuming this has something to do with him. Potentially. She's kind of like nods. Um, I'm kind of interested about the house. Hmm. Which house? Constance, the address. Uh, it's uh, 37 Celio Walk. Oh. Uh. And she kind of like looks at you with a knowing smile. Um, yes, there's a lot of stories that have to go on with that house. Absolutely. And she kind of um, uh, smiles as she said that, like a not like a a knowing smile. <laughs> I love her face. <laughs> okay. It's oh. the clown. <laughs> That's my wife and my child. That's why there were that's that's why there were four hands. <laughs> Hi, lovely face. <clears throat> um. So yeah, she she smiles a uh, kind of like a knowing smile, but it's not necessarily like she's not like necessarily happy about it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I love a good scary story. You think you can tell us some of the, the history of the house? 
Well, um, I can tell you. To be clear, this is like Constance's like zone. She's she's careless whispering right now. She's like curled up, cross legs on a on some kind of like chair or sofa or armchair, whatever she's sitting on, sipping her tea. Um. I could tell you that there's been a lot of pain and suffering in that house over the years. I can tell you that, um, um, there's, well, Arthur Donnelly is, it's the most recent person who's perished there, but, um, there's also, um, Yamila Asari. And I know, and she's like, kind of like, um, she's trying to put a finger on it puts it on her lips and she says uh, and I know that there's been some other tragedy associated with the house but um, it's before my time to be honest she takes a sip of tea do you um, do any possible uh details that haven't been in the paper? Um, Any rumors? Go ahead and roll me a luck check. Um, When in doubt, when it doesn't say it in the module, we'll leave it up to a a luck check. That is the general (laughs) MO. Hi! (laughs) I know that the house has undergone... Um, multiple uh, renovations. Um, um, people Are these trying legal? to update it. Uh, yes. Are they yes. legal? Yes. Yes. No. I uh, definitely legal. <clears throat> um, but Do you yeah, know I, I, she just kind of like shakes her head. I don't know exactly when. Um, I just know that uh, I know that I know that they've happened. I know the most recent one happened in early mid two thousands, something like that. Well, actually, that's not true. I know that um, Gamilla herself made some changes to the house, um, and apparently there were some before that with the previous tenant. Has there um has there been anything fishy around in that street or is it just that house? As far as I know, um the only thing that's ever been strange on that street is that house. Okay. I know that it has a a reputation in the community. Mm-hmm. Is that kind of like a like a superstition kind of thing where people avoid it, avoid it, like walk across the street to walk across, you know, pass it or anything yeah. like that? No, uh, I'd say Do little kids case. dare each other to touch the door. I imagine so. She smiles, um, <laughs> but um, yes, I know that uh, people speak about the the whole, <laughs> at least in the community, in, in, in hushed tomes because of the tragedy that's been associated with it. Um, some believe it's evil. She kind of rolls her eyes. Um, but um, people will believe what they believe. Do you know, like, I know obviously you said a lot of this was sort of before your time. Do you have any sort of inclination on you know how far back these superstitions go like, are we are we talking it's just one of those things that that everyone has believed as far as people can remember or is it fairly a, a fairly recent kind of superstition um no i don't think it's a a recent thing at least for as long as i remember um hell i can remember when i was a child um people kind of talked about it in uh, as if it was spooky 
Like in hash times? Yeah. I know that, uh, and she will take a sip of tea and then she looks at you and she says, I know a couple of my classmates dared one another to touch the doorknob. <laughs> Boots just kind of giggles. Did anything happen to those classmates? Mm, no, I don't think so. <laughs> That's where she turns around and says, yeah, one of them was Arthur Donnelly. <laughs> <laughs> They're all dead now. <laughs> <laughs> can um i mean i feel like ava would whip out her phone and try and do a little bit of digging on the internet and try and find out how old if if she can like when this house was built how long these sort of rumors and things have been around oh, and maybe con to see if she can find out any pre any other previous owners or anything <laughs> like that sure um <clears throat> go ahead and uh go ahead and make me a computer science check and uh we're gonna say it's gonna take time so you're kind of doing this while they're talking yep. makes sense cool um so you get on and we'll come back to that in a bit cool all right um so yeah she uh yeah, she just says, uh, that's pretty much all I know about it, though, unfortunately. And there's nothing, like, in the shop that that has come from the house, for instance? As far as you know, obviously, you can't know where everything comes from, but... I feel like if someone had something from in there, they'd, they'd probably tell the story, right? Yeah. What's up, buddy? Do you mind if I use Sass's computer on my account for uh, the VR thing? Not right now. Because I'm playing my games, huh? And you're loud. <laughs> that frown. <laughs> I'm loud. <laughs> um, go ahead and roll me a... Uh, go ahead and roll me a check. What kind of check? Luck check. I don't know what success or failure would be, really. I, I I know of no pieces myself that have come through um, my establishment from that home that have been associated with it. No. Would you like one? I'm certain they're hey, fascinating. We don't, we don't know. <laughs> I was I was going to offer it anyway. <laughs> Just for all the help that she's given. I mean, what I can tell you is, is if you could, if you know of a uh, of a piece. Uh, I could definitely help you track it down if it comes to your knowledge. Okay, well, we'll, we'll keep that in mind if we, if we come across needing to find something. Sure. Yeah, I appreciate that. Thank you. No, you're very welcome. <clears throat> um, is there anything else I can help you with? Any Anything that I might be of assistance with? Do you have Can any we... good pens? Do I have any good pens? Um, let's see. Constance is just going to kind of give Booch a side eye, but then just like, laugh. Like, this was supposed to be my vacation, okay? Um, what was the question again? Sorry. Like, does she have any good pens? Like any oh. old, like antique pens? Yeah, she'll laugh and she of course, I have some amazing antique pens. And she'll kind of like walk over uh, to the front of the store and just assume that you're kind of like following her. And she uh, has maybe like this display case. <clears throat> and she, uh, there's like a number of like fountain pens that look like, you know, they've been through some, like they're old they look like they've been used. They've been and she, shit, dude. <laughs> she uh she picks one up and she uh she says, uh, rumor has it that Neville Chamberlain <laughs> himself used this one. And she like puts it back down. Um and then she uh kind of goes to another one and she says, uh said that uh Princess Di actually used this pen to sign a number of uh documents as well. 
And so she kind of like puts them back and she goes through like a variety uh, of little stories and the like that are associated with them. Are there any that are confirmed instead of rumored? <laughs> Roll me a luck check. Shit. <laughs> While the pen thing's going on, you said there was like pictures of things that she was looking for, for instance. I'm going to have a little nosy at them and see if there's anything interesting. Pertaining to, you know, what we're doing, not just randomly interesting. Sure. Um, no, I mean, it doesn't look like I mean, there's anything super interesting. Um, I mean, <laughs> you're able to ascertain, like, some people are looking for, um, you know, um, end tables. Some people are looking for, um, uh, trying to think of just furniture <laughs> that people would collect. <laughs> uh, wingback chairs. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, wingback chairs. That'd be a really good one. Chotskis. Um, a number of like, They're not Chotskis, like the cases. Picture frames would be another big one that people have like cared a lot about. Um, <laughs> pictures, art, um, but yeah, nothing. Nothing strikes your eye as like this is out of the ordinary. Cool. Do you want me to go get the table? Are we dropping the table off? <laughs> Are we keeping it for now? I didn't know she I say, friendly until five minutes ago. I would say let's go ahead and leave the table here because then that way we're Wait, not like, going to get around. <laughs> so while this is the, while the whole pen thing is going on, Bo's going to go out the car and pick up the table to bring it inside. Sure. <clears throat> okay, so you bring it in and um, she's like, oh... And she looks at it. She says, it's a fine piece. Um, she looks at it and she goes, uh, uh, I don't, uh, you can leave it with me and uh, I'll do some research on it and be able to get back to you. Um, oh, that but, sounds uh, good. You, you, got a, uh, you got a card or a number? Yes. And, and she'll give you her card that you can reach her cool. at. Uh, just remind me about... Uh, you're calling about the tickets for the opera. Yep, so that's good. Before she takes it, I'm going to like run my hand under the bottom of the table. Do I find anything? Uh, do a quick once over. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you do not find anything uh, okay. giving it a once over. Um, it's probably because you tried to swim rather than. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's a good idea, though. Good idea. Um, as for, um, as for, uh, the pen, she looks at this one. She says, this is actually held by, um, Princess Beatrice of the United Kingdom. She was the fifth daughter and the youngest child of Queen Victoria and Prince Albert. It is confirmed that this was her pen. That she used to write letters uh, to loved ones. Do you have documentation on that? I do. She smiles and she uh, <laughs> brings it out. And uh, sure enough, it seems legit. How much? How much? How much? It's a priceless, priceless thing. Held by if it was a priceless, figure. it wouldn't be here. She smiles. <laughs> <laughs> Let me get back to you on that. All right. Okay. Uh, so she has got the antique table in store. She said that she would be more than willing to kind of uh, take a look at it, see if she can find out any information. Um, she did seem to be kind of uh, like, okay, there was some kind of funniness, but she didn't really have a ton of information as to exactly what. How would you guys like to proceed? It was the other one that we had to go talk to. It was the professor, uh, right? The, the psychologist, dude. The abnormal psychology, dude. Emil Yero. Ava, as you have uh, been kind of like clicking away, um, 
Let's see here. Give me a second. Um, what is it that you were looking up? You're just trying to look up what information again? Um, uh, like any history on the house, if, uh, if there's sort of any documented previous owners or, uh, names of anybody else that, you know, met a grizzly and that just more information on the house that might be out there on the internet. You get one ping. Um... Uh, there is a man named, give me a second here. Um, you get something funny that happened in 2000, but it seems like a, like a little blip. Um, it's just, uh, one name. It is a Lewis Tycroft. Um, um, he was found uh, <laughs> dead <laughs> at 37 Celio Walk um, in uh, on the 12th of September. 2000 but that's really all you're able to get wow internet sucks so there's like no information on when it was built or anything no amazingly no like estate agents listings in the years past i suppose i suppose you would be able to see like a state you know like that it had um it went for is it a currently uh, listed <laughs> no it is not currently listed <laughs> murder house for sale <laughs> <clears throat> but you never know you know um but yeah there was a there's been a handful of of families funny enough it doesn't seem like there's a lot of information about the home pre 2000. That's really, that's really the only other ping that comes up. Hmm. Okay. Is there a way that Booch would be able to use his knowledge and bureaucracy to figure out like being able to go through and get the information of if that if the renovations were done legally where he could find what company did it like being able to find the blueprints for the house yeah go ahead and roll me a bureaucracy check and let's see if uh you get an idea about it fair enough yeah, depending on the renovations, they would have had to applied for uh, would have had to have applied for planning permission and stuff, and that should be yeah. with local sure. councils and things. Okay, um, you get an idea that um, you've got a couple of ideas. First off, um, there is tons of paperwork pre-internet and also tons of it it's it's i mean you you still deal with this with the lapd right every now and then you've got to go back into these files that have not been digitized and in fact that's probably one of the things that's a, a bit frustrating but also makes booch a little bit excited because it's something that he probably loves to do um it occurs this to you true. It occurs to you that um, something similar could possibly be going on here as to where to get that information as to where to be able to look. You know that essentially you would need to go to like the county seat um, uh, that they would be able to have uh, 
they would generally keep those types of records, whether they be births, whether they be deaths, whether they be applications for permits, like um, all of that type of stuff. Now, there is one other issue with with kind of everything that's that's going on here, which is. Um, who, who, who's got, does anybody have a history check? Or does anybody have history? Yo. Go ahead and roll me a history. I do. Okay, both of you. Go ahead and roll me it. History is my thing, man. Sure. I've got 30 in history. Go ahead and roll it. Yeah, go for it. Is there anything like super fragile in here? Oh, yeah. There's all yeah. kinds of fragile stuff. Oh, no. Uh-oh. Good thing it's your thing. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm just wandering yeah. around. Like, no, obviously, I'm not paying attention to this conversation at all. I'm just looking obviously. at it. And I'm just looking at everything, kind of staring at stuff. And, like, I want to kind of accidentally, you know, is a klutz a little bit, you know, maybe, maybe you bump into something. Uh, okay, so let me resolve two things then. So first off, Outlaw, it occurs to you that during World War II, Coventry was essentially leveled by the Nazis. There were very few buildings that were that remained standing. That might complicate being able to uh, get some paperwork, at least pre that time. <clears throat> if, if indeed anything goes back that far. Um, second issue at hand is um, uh, with that said, yeah, the, the county seat would be the place to, to check that out. And for anybody's information, it's generally like that in any county. Like the county seat, the they they have all of the paperwork. Um, now, Willie, uh, as for your character, um, mine is kind of wandering and he accidentally bumps into <clears throat> what appears to be kind of like this this porcelain doll it's like a doll with like a soft body but like a porcelain face and you kind of like knock it over and she kind of like looks towards that really quick with a horrified look now are you trying to like grab it as well and keep it from falling or you just don't care um i'm gonna try try and save it all right roll me a dexterity check will the dexterity be the uh the teller of this one this is a Straight dexterity. Yep. Straight dexterity. Nice. Fail. Oh, All right. So she looks at you. It crashes on the I'm ground. The, the porcelain breaks. She looks at you and she's like, oh, that was a price. That was I'm a very, moving. that was a very old thing. She stands up. She goes over to you and she's like, what are you doing? And she, not you know, moving. What do you mean? You're not moving. I'm frozen. She can't see me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna come out the back room and ask Lena. What, what are room. you doing? Uh, it fell. Yeah, it fell. It fell because you walked into it like a buffoon, and she, you know, kneels down and starts to like sweep it up into like this little tray. She looks at you kind of like with a very stern look and um, a look of consternation. And she says, OK, well, I need to look up this table. If you guys need anything else, please come back later. Um, until then, I, I do have some work I need to get done. Um, I'm going to look Bo right in the eye and just mouth the word failure. <laughs> 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 Messed up. Bo's just gonna shake her head like what the fuck and walk outside and have smoke. <laughs> Fair enough. <clears throat> okay. Um how do you guys proceed? Um she's kind of asked you, you know, she's like she's like, I got work to do. It seems like at least at the very least right now there's nothing more that can happen with this. Um what do you guys do? You have um the county seat is a possible option. You've got um, the uh, you've got the Emil person, Emil Yero, who is a parapsychologist and associate professor of abnormal psychology at Fulton or at um, Coventry College downtown. 
<clears throat> um, you, of course, have the... Is uh, he a friendly as well, or is he just a random guy? Is this is a little guy. It's a random guy. I have no idea. I just wanted to say that. Let's... Two um, friendlies in one campaign would be crazy. Right? Yes, yes. He is he was also mate he is also a friendly. Alright, cool. What? It's crazy. And what did hit what, I, I can't remember because I didn't have my, my, my notebook out when we were playing. Did um what was what was his deal? Did, did he like deal I with have, the guy? I, I have down that he like is a professor and like is all about like abnormal psychology okay so you might know stuff about the house maybe or like you know weird afflictions that cause explosive yeah. odd suicide yeah 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 okay 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 cool cool cool, cool, cool. I feel like that's a good shout to go and visit him get yeah. some more information uh, Bucci's gonna be like, look, I oh, know that, uh, trying to get down and sort through the paperwork is gonna take a lot of time. I uh, like to go to the, uh, court office. The what um, office? The coroner's. Okay, so you want to go to the coroner's office. Um, Booch is doing what again? He's gonna go to the, you said the, the courthouse? The county seat? All right, so oh, yeah, just the be- county seat. If you guys, so at this point in time, you guys are essentially close enough to downtown. Um, and I don't want to get too weird, weird uh, pulled down into the weeds. So everything is relatively within walking distance. Um, so if you guys would like to separate and kind of do things, you absolutely can. Ava's going to uh, offer to help Beach because she started researching this place found nothing which was kind of, well not much which is kind of weird okay it so was like you... challenge accepted <clears throat> yeah right. exactly so we've got the coroner uh linus is going to the coroner uh and actually why don't we go ahead and do this <laughs> um oh you know what i had such a great idea at one point and i totally spaced out um, you know what I'm gonna do? I have a. What fun are you gonna idea. do? I have a fun idea. I'm gonna move us to a new page. It's gonna be blank, but I have <gasps> I have plans for it. Wow. Uh, if you would be so kind and pull your guys' tokens onto the page, I would appreciate it. How does one do that? You should be able to just drag and drop um, from the journal tab, just like uh, Willie did. Oh, nice. There you go. Shit. What is oh that? Oh my god. Amazing. <laughs> I was trying to move my thing. <laughs> it happens every time. Every it's fucking session, every, man. Yeah. It's just, it's so funny. <laughs> it's so I dumb. Totally love it. Uh, Irish, is that your face because you're angry? Yes, I didn't I draw that. Yeah, I didn't draw that. I drew the blue line. <laughs> Which just happens to be the eyebrow that makes it look you that much angrier. <laughs> awesome. Oh, I like that. Let's go ahead and use that. Get the other eyebrow. Okay. <clears throat> kind of doing this idea that I had on the fly, but I think it'll be kind of a fun one to help us keep track of each other. Two pupils now. Super angry. <laughs> Yeah. Super angry. That thing looks, um, yeah. It kind of looks like a, a Babam from Final Fantasy. That is the county seat. If you're going to the county seat, please put your token on it. I think it's already done. You just <laughs> happened to put it there, and we are there. Okay. Go ahead and put it at the entrance then. Because you're not in the building oh. yet. See how it kind of like all around it and like the, the, the pavement and just the general feel of the place is like a piece of shit. Fucking idiot. You say janky as hell. Hey look, I'm that person over there. I've got a tiny, tiny body. <laughs> okay, 
Okay. Ew, that coroner's is office. the coroner's office. If you're going to the coroner's office, please put it there. All right. So we've got oh, two people yeah. going to the county seat. We have one people going to one person going to the coroner's office. Where are the rest of you going? Uh, Bo and Constance. I think we're going to go talk to the professor, dude. No. Yeah, I'm down for leaving Willie to go to the coroner's office alone. For I mean, Linus is weird and can do his thing. And two, what I the feel hell? bad. No, I feel bad <laughs> in some situations when we're all doing things, and I, it's, you don't talk much, and I feel bad. So I want you to have your time to shine. Yeah. Jokes on you. I'm still not going to do talking. <laughs> <laughs> It's she has be a all... long and conversation to with a corpse. Like it's going to be all on me to just dish. <laughs> <laughs> I love Linus. He's so fun. I don't really <laughs> talk to Hello. How are you? Just, he just turns right. up and causes chaos and then it's like, no, I'm just a doctor. Uh, that is the college. Go ahead and uh, play yourself on the college. <laughs> oh, God, the demon's coming to college. Ah! Apparently, that is <laughs> at the actual Coventry College. What was so, um, Constance's boyfriend's name? Eric. That's none of your business. <laughs> she hasn't told <laughs> any of you that they're dating. Well, no, I just, just saw at the bottom of the coroner's <laughs> office, it says urine. So. <laughs> okay. So let's go ahead and deal with this first. Um, <clears throat> Linus was the first one to talk. So I'm going to give him the, the uh, we're going to go to the, the coroner's office first. Sound oh, like a plan? Oh, boy. <clears throat> All right. Um, so you make your way uh, to what appears to be kind of like a, 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 a the police uh, uh, building uh, department. I couldn't uh -huh. think of the word. Uh, I couldn't think of the word. Um, When you go in there, you just ask to see the coroner. How do you do this? I'm going to whip out the agent's badge and be like, did this man work here? <laughs> oh, oh, so you're going to whip out uh, Agent Donnelly's badge. Yeah. Did this man work. <laughs> <My voice> is... <clears throat> All right. So you, you, you're in the uh, police department. Um, Coroner's the, office. Yes. Coroner's is that, office. Is that where it is? Is it is it the police department coroner's office? Yes. Or is it like a separate entity? <clears throat> uh, actually, it's the county coroner's office. Yeah, that actually would make sense that everything's kind of around. So actually, it's not the police department. It's okay. it's a separate nope. place. So it's the county coroner's office. Cool, cool, cool. And at this point in time, I think yesterday, last time we played, it was ten thirty. So it is. Uh, you spend a little bit of time at the antiquarian and so i'd say it's probably about 11 30 at this point just before lunch dope 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 cool, 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 cool. we don't have an eric to be like hey this is a really cool lunch spot let's go eat here um there's a there's a, a woman who's sitting at the entrance to the coroner's office and uh she sees you she's like hello how can i help you that's my best Did english accent work here no but he was killed himself recently. What do you mean? No, he says he works here. You you have Agent Donnelly's badge. That's what you're flashing. No, his his, his um his fake, fake ID. His fake ID fake that box. says he works here. <sighs> I forgot about that. That he said that he worked here. Yeah. Shit. Yeah. Um. So, um, God dang it. Uh, I don't know how to, I guess I the question to... is how, how much would his, uh, like his actual face be in the news? Because how much would he have been photographed as a Delta Green? Well, I'm sure his but body more to the point, here. More to the point, or how fucking here. mangled was like blood covered and stuff. Okay. Uh, roll me a luck check. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. One oh in boy, doubt. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh <laughs> you got boy. the new intern. She doesn't know. Yeah, I got the new intern. She's <laughs> stupid. She's dumb, dumb. I got I got the replacement. <laughs> okay. Wow, you rolled two ninety-two percent back to back. And that's <laughs> kind of lucky. So I think that's a success. <laughs> yeah, you you would think that. <laughs> um, <laughs> she uh, she looks at you and she says, Agent, uh, uh, he was a um. He did some consulting work here or then, but he, he died. He killed himself recently. Uh, can, can 
Can I ask how you got a hold of that badge? Um, I'm a part of uh, what 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 is my fake um M5. identification? M5. M5. Yes. I'm gonna pull out my. I'm a part of M5, and I'm just checking out this uh here. Oh. You know thing. Um. Can I just interject for a second? It's mm -hmm. MI5. You guys are claiming to be motorways right now. Sorry, MI5. I'm a part of the <laughs> MI5. I'm the MI5. Shut up! I don't I'm here know. To check out your road works, <laughs> making sure they're off the code. Um. <clears throat> So, uh, yeah, if you need to, um, yeah, uh, let me get the coroner right now and you can s speak to him. Um, okay. So she kind of uh, walks in back. Um, you kind of hear some talking and eventually this man comes up and he goes, hello, how can I help you? I've uh, been told you work for MI5. Yeah, I was just curious about this uh, gentleman right here. What, yes. what was he doing here? Um, well, he committed suicide recently. He yes, I know that already. Yes, he occasionally <laughs> came in to consult with some cases, but um, other than that, um, that's um, that, that's 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 the most I, I know uh, immediately. Romeo, Romeo, persuade check. Persuade, persuade, oh boy. persuade. This is why you don't let me do things alone. That's yeah, great. I love it. <laughs> By the way, this is also at a minus 20%. Minus 20%? <laughs> the heck, man? I'm already like <laughs> minus five. Oh! oh holy oh. shit. Oh. I get One. whatever I want. <laughs> <laughs> Takes a random awesome. lollipop on his way out. Um... <laughs> You always come in clutch when you need it, man. Uh, yes. Why, why, don't, why don't why don't we speak in the back, um, please? Let us go speak in the back. I'm gonna puff out my chest and be like, "They don't need them." That that thing you just did, <laughs> I can't believe you did that. That's crazy. That's crazy. I'm gonna say indeed. <laughs> uh, so you uh, walk in the back, um, and he uh, looks at you and he says, oh, "This is probably best spoken over a, a cup of tea." She like a cup of tea. Fuck off. <laughs> I don't know what you guys do. It just sounds Emma. like we're human uh, beings too. Yeah, yeah. I would say let's get a cup of coffee here. Coffee exists too. Do you guys I'm drink coffee a, as I'm much a, as I'm tea? A coffee guy, but you know when in yeah. Rome, <laughs> people in general, yeah, me okay. personally, no, but like people, yeah. So you're saying, if this was you, it would be a cup of tea. Yeah, one hundred percent. So what you so, could say is, let's just go get a cuppa, and it could mean coffee oh. or tea. Yeah, coffee why, is just not my cup of tea. You know? Why don't Why don't we go get a cup Can of something? Can we go get some tea and biscuits, please? Let's yes. go get a cuppa. We have some, we have some good biscuits in the back. Biscuit. I was actually I'm looking up how to do a Coventry biscuit. accent, and apparently they call biscuits something weird. That much I remember. Really. Yeah, there's like a special term, and I was like, I'm never gonna remember that. <laughs> can you um, can you remind me what the um, the antique shops lady was? Was it Elizabeth? Elizabeth Tucker. Okay, thank you. I lost all my notes from last session, so I'm just winging it. Sure, 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 sure. I um, remember with my brain, like I forgot what the brand of quick lime was, and that's gonna be super important. <laughs> I'm sure some of you. I think that was. I think that was oh, the entirety of your notes from last session. Was just a piece of paper <laughs> was, that said "quick lime." I think it was Greymont. That's it. Yes, it was Greymont. Greymont. Okay. Yeah, Greymont. Quick Ooh. lime. It's made in France. We oui, we. Oui. All right. right. Um, so you're asking. Um, <laughs> you're asking about um, Arthur Donnelly. Yes. Okay. Um, and you're a and you were asking what he did here, as in at the coroner's office, or yes, is, um, I could tell you that um, he uh, every now and then, uh, not often, mind you, but he would uh, come and do some consultant work. He, after all, was um, he was an agent of MI5, 
And so uh, some of our work intersected every so often. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Is um, his body here? Yes, um, yes, his body is here. Can I take a look-see? Um, uh, yes, yes. I'm a doctor. Uh, yes, because you're, yeah, you, you got a critical, so he's, he's very, um, he, he doesn't he's know why, lovely. but yeah. Oh, he's yeah. A, He's but intimidated he, he, by your MI5 bag. He would, like, give you his balls if he could. <laughs> He's back in the background holding a boombox while you're looking at the body playing. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Notice me. I have, to make, that, Thanks, I have to make that clip shorter because I got dinged for it on YouTube. Oh, no. Really? <laughs> I thought it was short enough because I think it's like eight seconds. Yeah. And I think it was ten. So, um. So he takes you back to um, the body. Hell yeah. Um, and kind of like pulls it out on the slab. Um, he's yeah. you know, he's still in kind of like that plastic uh, bag that they have deceased people in. And he, he unzips it and you can see that he's I'm been on. He's grab been his nice. hand first before he unzips it. Oh, okay. So you grab his hand before he unzips it. Wait. That's so cute. Um, yeah, uh, yes? I'm going to reach into my duffel bag that I have, you know, carrying around. And I'm going to put on a, uh, a mask. All right. He's, he's like, no, that is, that's wise. That is absolutely wise. And he will actually go and put <laughs> mask and a gloves on as well. Uh, wash his hands. Say, I just the pull out yards. a hazmat suit. <laughs> never again will he he get I've been infected. carrying it since montana <laughs> just in case i kept saying I to myself i have a hazmat suit in my <laughs> no. bag or else i would okay um so he um e -E -E he opens up the black bag after he takes uh -huh. a look at you to make certain that it's fine for him to be able to do that. I nod my head. Okay. You nod your head and he uh, opens it up. How did you become um, this man's god? What the fuck? <laughs> uh, Arthur Donnelly's body lays before you. And mm -hmm. he looks at it and he says, so damn strange. They're... Um, So it's very odd, the whole affair. Um, and then he uh, will kind of like point towards the the cut on the neck uh, mm -hmm. where Arthur Donnelly uh, committed suicide. Uh-huh. Um, there's no hesitation marks on this, which is interesting. Very odd. I'm just gonna look at him and be like, mm-hmm. Uh-huh. So are you trying to like kinda of like prod him to keep talking or are you yep. just I'm just I'm just gonna let him continue. You no, know, you got a critical, so I'll give you it. <laughs> um but this is the end of your critical. No. Um I don't know how, um, but Arthur Donnelly, um, the throat, the slit on his throat is the exact same thing as Yamila Asari um, 16 months ago. Um, and it's strange because on, on a female suicide, um, it's highly unusual. The blood spray what are you patterns. About uh, women generally don't, when they do commit suicide, do not kill themselves in a violent manner. It's not unheard of that they kill themselves in a violent <laughs> manner. It's just happens less. Usually, we see something like an overdose of pills or drugs. It's generally um, men who are the ones who will kill themselves in a violent manner. Um, 
shotgun blast to the face, a hanging slit to the throat, as in the case of Arthur Donnelly. So it's very strange. Um, the other interesting thing is the blood spray patterns were nearly identical. Though Yamila Asari, uh, being smaller, had less of it. I think somehow Arthur Donnelly must have found a photo of the crime scene after Asari had killed herself and he recreated it obsessively. Oh. Interesting. What was it? Ah, uh, ah, uh, nothing. No, go on. <laughs> roll, me a, roll me a persuade check, but I'm going to give you a plus 20%. All right. If this you roll 100 right now, I'm going to... This is the one I <laughs> fail. Here we go. Plus 20. Submit. Fail. Oh my god, All what right. the fuck? <laughs> what the absolute fuck, dude? What's with this rolling doubles, man? So, dude. this is... Snake eyes. I love how... Wow. Like, it's every... so I love that how you a critical, call him critical. a failure, and he calls himself a failure, but when he's by himself, he's like, I am untouchable. Right. He's a savant. There's nobody time. to see it. <laughs> so your tactic works. You're not like, you're not like being super pushy, right? You came in, um, just wanted to know what this guy's deal was, and you're not like, badgering him with questions or being intimidating you're just kind of letting him speak um man so, just likes to open up yeah he uh he just kind of against his better judgment he's like well and then he kind of like talks, talks in hushed tones kind of gets close to the body with you this is the odd thing then there was the mirror it can it can still be seen in photos of the scenes and in both cases, the shape of blood on the wall, mirror, behind the victim, it looks like something was blocking the spray. It, it almost looked like the shape of a person. But in neither death did detectives find a suicide weapon. On the other hand... <laughs> the detectives didn't find any evidence whatsoever that anyone else had even been present in either death. There was no concrete evidence uh, to indicate anything otherwise. Uh, so, uh, the last possible option is suicide. It appears that Arthur Donnelly recreated the, the same exact circumstances of death as Yamil Asari did. And he just kind of like shakes his head and just kind of shrugs like um, and then just kind of like thumps his fingers. Mind if I uh, look over the body? Please. Alright. I'm going to go to my duffel bag. I'm going to pull out all of my equipment that is needed and I'm going to pull out some my phone and some earbuds and I'm going to play some music. Okay. That's going to start looking at the body. I'm going to start dancing while I look at the body. Why is listening to Taylor Swift? You can't influence That's me otherwise. <laughs> Take it off. He will say, he'll say, he'll say one more thing um, before you do that. And he says, it's, uh -huh. a, it's a shame that, um, that um, there's been nothing but trauma and tragedy at this house since the 1960s, at least. Kind of shakes his head and then he goes over to like wash his hands. What do you mean the 1960s? 
Um, he looks back at you. Uh, I mean, Yamil and um, and Arthur Donnelly are, are not the only ones who have died in that house. Um, in fact, it has a bit of a, a reputation. Um, I, uh, I've lived in, in the Hollowbrook neighborhood for most of my life, and um, I've I've handled every single death at that house since the 1960s. That is one old dude. Do you have a... <laughs> yeah, he's about... Record? S- he's about 60 years old. Um, wh- what kind of records are you referring to? Of uh, the autopsy and the, the, the suicides. Just records. Oh, of the uh, of the other people who died. Incidents. Yes, I mean yes. We we do have those death certificates. Can I have a copy of all of them? Yes. Okay. Give me a second here. Can I, I would just like to point out that the Valren method of getting people's information getting information from people works even on games like this which is you just let them talk yeah no, because, hey, that's yeah. the cow method <laughs> right. that's true. you guys have the same method yep um Yo, so this is how i let them talk okay yeah man you you got two critical ones and um this guy only calls for to persuade checks. So, um, hey, yo, he, um, <laughs> he, uh, fetch me my water. Fetch he... me my coffee. I want a bagel. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. I will get you that bagel and everything else. <laughs> um, okay. So he's like, I suppose I could do that. Um, so he will, um, he will go back uh, to a filing cabinet um, and you see uh, I imagine like you see him out of the corner of your eye in the meantime you're doing your autopsy thing so what do you want to do for the autopsy well I'm going to look for signs of struggle I'm going to look at the cut I'm going to see if I can find any like remnants of like something like you know like metallic pieces on the slit or like you know anything that would leave a trace on like where he gets sliced Hmm. and then i'm gonna look for like hmm, other signs of like trauma because if it was a suicide maybe he like has done like prior things like any bruises or anything sure you know um all right so um go ahead and roll me uh what would you like to roll to do this uh, forensics would make sense i would I say like uh, one. i would say it's forensics all right yeah go ahead and roll me forensics hey yo hey, all right you? man you're on fire um so you now, do, do we even have to roll the next one because we know it's a 56. <laughs> um you do an entire once over over Arthur Donnelly's body. Um there is no other marks. Nothing. The only thing that is going on is that his throat has been slished, slashed, been cut. And you confirm the coroner's findings, which is no, um, what am I trying to say? No hesitation, which is strange because on, on, on suicide, sometimes there is because they maybe like last second, even they're like, what am I doing? But even then it's, you know, too late. All right. It, it is a clean slice. 
There are no other marks. There are no other signs of struggle. There's nothing under his fingernails. Um, there is nothing else you can, you know. I imagine How? the body, the, there's maybe some pooling of blood on the body. Maybe it's been stained a little bit from the, from the blood. Um, but other than that, that is the only sign of trauma that you see. How big of, like, a cut is it? It is from carotid to carotid. You're talking like how wide? No, no, trying no. to get an no, idea of the, I wanted. the well, width get, of the blade. No, I wanted. To, well, I'm assuming it was like a machete, or a, you know, a knife. Yeah, it was. So it's a thin slice. Yeah, but it would have been like a yeah a, 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 a razor or something like that. But it's uh, a clean slice. Okay. Um, um, that that is odd to you. Yeah, because it's so long, or because there's no struggle. Both. Um, if somebody is going to commit suicide, you only need to cut one carotid. The fact that both are cut stands out as odd to you. And the fact that there's no hesitation also stands out as odd to you. Um, okay. As you, um, we're kind of finishing this up. Your Does music's... he still have blood? Like, I'm asking if like he was fully drained, like when he got sliced, because there's a giant splatter and all this stuff. Like, was he fully drained, or he still got blood in him? So he would have blood, uh, but how okay. it works with a dead bot. So a couple things. First off, most of the most of his blood is gone. Um, right. Which, which, from everything that you've been able to know, would have happened at the crime scene because they said right. it looked like a bomb of blood went off, which yeah. is to be expected from a carotid artery slice. The heart just keeps pumping, and it's just going to spray everywhere. Okay, well, that's um, normal. Got it. That's normal. Um, also, what's normal is that, like, eventually, um, there will be some blood left in it mm-hmm. from the, that type of a wound, just because. It's a the best way I can describe it is like when you get a drink, a soft drink and a cup and you're trying to like you get that slurping sound at the end. Like, you know, there's some still in there, but you're not able to get all of it. Right. right That's right. kind of the gist of what's going on here. And you would okay. see a hematoma a blood essentially that has pooled at the uh, the bottom of this uh, of this person's body. So in their butt, in their um in their back, etc. You would have, you'd be able to see that. And I'm assuming he would also be able to show you photos of that. Now, when you actually get to the point of trying to preserve a body, that's when people are, are drained of all of their blood. So that way their corpse can, um, uh-huh. it's one less thing that's rotting inside what of the corpse. That's what my son's asking <laughs> difficult question. <laughs> How do you know so much about this? Um, it's crazy. It's crazy. Everybody Google takes kids. one step away. Um, you're finishing up. Do you have any other questions about the body? Hmm. No sign of struggle. No sign of struggle. Uh, think here. Am I missing it? I think I am. Well, I'll tell you what. I'll let him speak. And if you can think of the question, you can ask it. Fair, Fair enough? Yeah. So it comes over to you with um, several death certificates. Okay, I don't notice him. You don't notice him. Yeah, because so, I'm. I got my music in and I'm looking absolutely. over the body. And he is just going to keep. Um, so that he'll just keep talking, and you don't hear anything. Good job, Linus. Whenever we meet, we meet, we meet, we meet, we meet, we meet, we meet. Yeah. Okay, he comes to you with a number of names. Uh, are you guys ready for this? Yeah. What do you mean, guys? I mean, I'm not there. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, we're not there. Me. Yeah. I'm ready. Like, for as what? in not Irish. <laughs> <laughs> DM me it. Don't let her know. <laughs> Don't worry, I, I I honestly haven't written anything down from your part. I've just been writing down stuff from the fucking... You think I've written stuff <laughs> down? <Yeah. laughs> Dude. Um, 
he comes to you with, uh, he comes to you with 15 death certificates. Oh my God. Holy shit. Okay. That's a lot of deaths one house. There's a lot of deaths in that house since the 1960s. It's so one every... What? Four. For three years? Are they all the same? Oh, right. I'm not there. Nope. 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 <laughs> Meta pigeon. <laughs> um, but he does have the names. Uh-huh. And presumably their dates. Um, to get right. more information, you would probably have to do research elsewhere. Uh, but these are—it's pretty basic. Oh, ah, it's just—it's yeah. just a—it's just, just a certificate that this person died at this year, and this is their name. All right. Yeah. 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 They don't have cause of death on there. On a death certificate. I guess I guess they would, wouldn't they? Um, I want to make certain. So give me a second. I want to make certain I'm doing this correctly because I don't want to give you so much that like it <laughs> breaks it. You know what I'm saying? Oh, so, my critical ones are breaking his game. <laughs> okay. Linus has solved the mystery. Single-handedly. <laughs> the thing is, he wouldn't even know he'd done it and keep it all to himself. Like, oh, well, by the way, I got all these names. What the hell, man? Why are you hate on Linus? <laughs> I tell you what. You see Linus like, yeah, I already knew that. Well, you didn't share it? No. <laughs> I didn't think it was important. <laughs> <laughs> just got to spill it that, like, when we're having, like, a, a takeaway dinner or something in, like, a hotel room. <laughs> And he's been like, oh, yeah, guys, by the way, there was 15 deaths in there. <laughs> They're all the same cause of death, too. I'm thinking it's the mayor. Okay. Let me go ahead and do this, then. I will, um, I will take a screenshot, and then I'm going to go ahead and share it with you guys in just a second. Fair enough? Oh, there's information on there he doesn't want us to have. Or should you only share it with Willie and keep the rest of us in the dark? Yeah. Ooh, I suppose I could. Yeah, that's probably. He's the only one that's it. It makes sense. <laughs> I'm never going to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> wow, why, did, why does this feel just familiar? To, just to be a jerk. <laughs> okay. I knew about the infection the whole time. Oh, I meant Constance's research on, like, the song and the star people. <laughs> yeah, if only you'd shared. I can't believe Genuinely you rolled a... a I can't believe you rolled two natural ones back-to-back, -back, man. That's crazy. And I rolled two natural <laughs> seven, 90, 92s. Yeah. Back well, to back. Yeah, na natural 92. Yeah, natural 92s. <laughs> uh, but it's the ones. <laughs> so what's the Crossroads demon coming for us? <laughs> it would have been if he didn't show show up. Was it 92? That's the bad one. Is that what you asked? 30. 30. 30. Gotcha. And you we only have like many one more. Uh... Want now. Okay, better. guys. Got, got the um, anyway. There oh. you go. He oh. comes back with um, multiple uh, people. Um, some of them uh, have like uh, names of people who are associated to them because that's what, you know, like survive by or, or what have you. Um, or, Should or we this, retroactively this... all just decide that, that Donnelly was 2023 and Asari was like 2022? Yes, yes, yes. We're moving up. Cool. Yeah, a couple of those dates. Um, but yes, yeah. <gasps> we, uh, oh, we're oh, changing man. it for our purposes. Uh, the top one was Donnelly as well. I was like, <gasps> There's two dials. <laughs> um, okay. 
I went over it multiple times. I think we're all. I think we're all good. Like I said, I just want to make certain I didn't give you guys extra, extra stuff. Um, so let's see here. All right. So as he brings out uh, multiple death certificates, um, he kind of goes over a few of them. <clears throat> he. Um, he uh, he looks at uh, John Tyler, uh huh, who is the one that died in 1994. Yeah, yeah. Um, and he says, um, "Give me a second, guys. I need to actually amend that really quick." Boom. So he comes, uh, he po uh, points out John Tyler in 1994, and he says, um, that's, that's better, Chris. He says, uh, John Tyler was a strange little fellow who uh, moved into town in uh, 1989. Uh, no one in town actually really knew him that well. Um, he worked at a supermarket, was a night manager, and was always a bit of an outsider. <clears throat> um, he was discovered uh, dead on the 12th of July, 1994. I ruled his death an accident. Um, there was no concrete evidence of foul play found. It was strange, though, because um, the house was locked and Tyler was dead in the master bedroom. His lungs were uh, full of water. No signs of struggle were found on the body. But the tub was dry as a bone and the plug was in the drain. I went ahead and uh, refixed that uh, death certificate handout that I gave you. Also, um, I knew of uh, Louis Tycroft. Uh, he was a lawyer who handled the Perkins estate planning um, in 1993. What estate planning? Uh, he was a uh, he was a he was a lawyer who managed estates. Essentially, uh, that was his that was his field of law. Or, um, I see. Real estate, uh, yes, you might call it. The The whole town heard about um, Tycroft's deteriorating mental state and his in, in how, and his encounter with the Hollowbrook uh, police just a few days before his suicide. Uh, Perkin was amazed. Um, oh, I, he's Perkin, my bad. I was amazed. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that Tycroft could shoot himself twice in the chest. He, uh, never seen anything like it. The first wound was damn instantly fatal, so I don't know how he would have been able to have done that. But he did. Kind of shrugs. Um, he hands the, uh, the death certificates over to you. And that comes with their names, uh, when they died, and you know the approximate reason for the the death. Okay. Oh, I actually forgot about one. I'm not going to amend this. Um, I'm not going to amend this uh, icon. But I'm gonna need you guys to, if you want to, you want this piece of information. I'll just have to write it down. Um. Oh, and it actually happened just before I became the coroner. But um, in 1960, was it 1960? Yes, yes, 1960. There was the um, Crease murder suicide. Husband. Um, killed his wife and then killed himself. The 
Crease? Yes, Crease. C R E A S E. George and Margaret Crease. I see. Do you ever, did this corner ever tell me his name? Yes. Uh, I don't know if I did, actually. Uh, his name is Emil Perkin. Perk. Or per Perkins. My apologies. Okay. Or oh, Elmer Perkins. Perkin. Kylie, Elmer right. Fudd. Okay. There you go. Thank that you. Is, that's all I know. No, the murders with, uh, or suicides or whatever this is, is, uh, with, like, a lot of blood. The walls, like, the mirror and that. Oh, um. No, I mean, the. Yamilla and Arthur were identical, but no other. No other um, death appeared to be like theirs. From what I recall, things are a bit fuzzy. Thank you. You're welcome. So, Willie, I'm going to put a pin in there on that, and we're going to go to another scene. Um, yeah. Uh, so let's go to, to let's have you guys roll for it. Uh, Vinda, why don't you roll for yours? Constance, why don't you roll for yours? And whoever rolls higher, we'll go to that one. What are we rolling? D100. Mm -hmm. 55. Vindo? Mm, Vindo say he was going to be right back. Oh, then Irish, you get to roll. D100. <laughs> but I guess oh, wait. Me. Uh... <laughs> Aya, Aya, I'm sorry, I got confused. <laughs> 55 is easy to beat. There we go. 84. Aya. Okay, so we'll go to Ava. Well, I feel weird because he's not here. <laughs> yeah, go to them. Yeah, I should have thought about that. But we know we won <laughs> in spirit, yes. so, you know, that's all, right. all that really matters. So, Constance and Bo, you guys go to. Coventry College, and you are there to go visit. Um, this is Emil, Emil Yarrow, the parapsychologist. Um, mm -hmm. um, you get to the um, kind of like the front area. Where there's a lot of hubbub, a lot of students moving to and fro from their various classes and the like. Um, the campus is alive, despite the the rain kind of coming down, which for whatever reason I got rid of. And uh, you're greeted by a lady at the front desk. Um, how can I help you? She says. Uh, hi, we're looking for a uh, Professor Yarrow. Ah, yes. Um, and she will give you the directions to go see Emil. Um, he is in, uh, kind of the, is he in the um, middle of a class. Can we go sneak in and sit in the back? <laughs> sure. That sounds fun. Hell yeah. All right. So there's a class going on with Emil Yarrow, uh, small lecture. It's not like a huge lecture hall. Like you'd see like mm -hmm. in, uh, movies, it's a small classroom. There's probably about six or seven students. You guys kind of slink in through the back, uh, to listen. And uh, you see a uh, a dire, very heavy weight man. Yes, and this is why parapsychology will be incredibly important for years to come. He says, uh, knowing what can uh, be going on in the other the, uh, the spirits, the ghosts, being able to help solve their mysteries. <laughs> delve the depths and he's just like very passionate about it with these students and you could tell that a couple of them are like hanging on every word and uh one or two are just kind of over it 
But uh, you come in, and he's like, ah, uh, some new students, I suppose. <laughs> Good to see more people in the program. And he uh, acknowledges you and, and nods. Yep. Well, we'll just do, like, the two-finger salute and just sit down somewhere. Yep. Awesome. Back. <laughs> um, he uh, is uh, very um, serious about his profession. He speaks with authority, uh, and he is uh, very professional. Um. You could tell that um, he, and and this is like your line of thing, Constance. You could tell that he has oh, a, yeah. you could tell he has a extensive knowledge of the occult. Um, can I can I roll and see if I can like try and outsmart him on something just for my own sake? Sure. Or probably make an idiot of myself. I'm down for either. <laughs> 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 Uh, no, so it, it, he's talking about something, and I'm just like, actually, that's incorrect. I need to roll a secret check. <laughs> I accidentally embarrassed him. Oops. Uh, Maybe. Oh, yes, yes, no, that that is correct. Thank you. Uh, I, 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 you've been clearly doing your reading. <laughs> uh, good, good show. Um, he keeps a, a serious <laughs> attitude, even um, as he's talking about um, long-term emotional energy and things of that nature. Eventually, the, cl the class concludes. Students uh, get up to leave, and he's kind of there, like, picking up his own things. And he uh, looks at you, and he says, that was quite, uh, it was quite good. Um, thank you for, for catching me on that point. No, of course, I'm, I'm well-versed in uh, all things weird. Yes. Well, I suppose I'm your uh, teacher, Emil Yero, and it's a pleasure to make your acquaintance. And he will stick out his hand to shake yours. Uh, are we alone in the room now? Yes. The students are gone. It is just you hmm. two and him. Okay. <coughs> I'm going to shake his hand and say, well, actually, uh, I'm a prospective student, perhaps, but um, I was actually wondering... We <sighs> We're doing this thing later, and I don't know if, like, you maybe have have some some knowledge of maybe the story behind this um this opera we're going to see. His uh, an eye kind of like comes up. Uh, what opera would that be? Uh, oh, what was the oh, what was the name? Oh, the, the 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 I wrote it down. I swear, the Baron's Last Breath. Yeah, I didn't write it. <laughs> ah, the Baron's Last Breath. Well. Might I invite you to my office for us to uh, sit and speak for some time about this opera? Hmm? I think that would be a good idea. Excellent. We shall go and have a cup of tea. You <laughs> <laughs> fucking rat, man. I know more than you do. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so you make your way over to his office. Um, you sit down, exchange pleasantries and the like. Um, he makes certain the door is locked and closed. Um, how can I be of assistance to you, uh, my good ladies? So we uh, we're kind of interested in uh, a certain building. Mm. Oh. 37... Celia Walk? Celia Walk? I heard some crazy stories. Well, yes, yes. I have, uh, it is definitely, um, people definitely have, uh, been spooked, scared by that home. So, uh, yeah. I am aware of it. What might your questions be? Have you done any kind of um, investigation on there or any kind of, uh, you know, like papers or hmm. no, any kind Maybe. of inf information? 
even just like uh like obviously you, you look into the the psychology behind things and how it might relate to the the occult or, or such like what could possibly drive a person to be severely interested in a case like that house hmm well i can tell you this um Sorry. Again, just want to make certain I'm doing all right. And not going over uh, too much. Mm-hmm. What's this guy's name? His name is Emil. Emil, Yarrow. Emil, Emil? Yarrow. Uh Emil Yarrow. <laughs> um, well, I can tell you this much. I have... Um, I've seen supernatural at work and um, I could tell you it could be a number of things um, the house could be demonically possessed it could be the long term emotional energy of inhabitants past that uh, haunt the facility I do know uh, of several other places in Coventry that have been haunted and I have been called in for expertise to help with that as well so I speak to you as an authority on this subject do you have the um, dresses of those places maybe maybe some of your findings yeah Mm. any notes Uh, yes yes very interesting so he um, kind of like goes through some notes and he says ah yes the the walker place um I remember this particular one that um, we found that spirits are more able to communicate in the dark at night. That just happens to be when they're out. And so um, if you're trying to get in uh, contact with uh, this, this, this entity that you might believe is there, I would suggest that. I would also suggest, and this is, uh, speak to you again as a professional, Mm-hmm, yeah. You need to wander alone. Um, spirits have an easier time communicating on a one-on-one basis. Uh, they don't come out when when multiple people are around. So if you're trying to to, to to speak to them, to communicate with them, to, to try and figure something out, I would highly suggest that as well. Um, it could help to definitely lessen some of the long-term emotional energy that is going on there. Uh, it, it, it might help to uh, make it so that they are a bit more uh, receptive to coming out. But th- think of it like this. If you have something that uh, traumatic that has happened to you, yes? Uh, do you shout it to the rooftops, to a crowd of people, or, or, or do, you, do you speak to it in, in a one-on-one basis with uh, someone you love, or a psychologist, uh, some type of counselor, right? And what if the, um, the, the spirits, uh, for instance, uh, don't want to talk about it at, at all? I found that time with them is the most persistent thing that can help. Spending time with the spirits, spending, showing, the, being a safe presence like you would with someone else. You think of it, um, uh, you, and she kind of like points towards Bo, uh, you've seen conflict and violence, have you not? Yeah. And do, do, you just, do you just tell every Tom, Dick, and Harry about it? No. No. Do you, do you, do you, have, a, do you have a trusted confidant that you would speak to? Maybe one or two that, that you might... Maybe sh- sometime. Maybe sometimes, yes, yes, yes. Depends uh, on the situation, really. Absolutely. Now, if you met someone, even if it was in a one-on-one basis right off the bat, would you share with them everything, even if you just met them? Oh, God, no. Absolutely. It's the same, it's the same with the spirits that have, have, have been trapped in in. in well, it's in kind of like situations. earning their trust, in a way. Absolutely, Yes. It takes it takes time for these things to happen. And so, um, yes, you might not, uh, after one evening, uh, find everything out. But in, in, in time, 
in time, I, I, I do believe that he would make their, what they, uh, you would earn their trust so that they could speak to you and, and maybe even you to them. Granted, they do it through their own means. So you Have you um, ever been to visit? Uh, Have I ever been 37 to visit? S- s- sail your walk? No, I have not. Do you know of anyone that has? Hmm. Let me roll a uh, d100 here. Do I know of anyone who has visited the place? Silly you walk. Yeah. Well, um, I do remember there there was a uh, a man who came to speak to me um, maybe a year ago um, and he uh, had many many questions about hauntings and what might be going on um, he uh, was persistent I believe he was actually maybe one of your fellow people. I'm gonna pull up like the the news article on his death, for instance, on on my phone, and just show him like a picture of him. Be like, was this 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 guy? Yes, that was that was him. Yes. So he, this is our character. He's talking about Arthur, right? Yes. Okay. 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 It's just for my note taken. What, uh, what kind of questions did he have? Oh, uh, well, the same thing that you're talking about. How 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 one might get rid of a presence like that, if it indeed exists there. Oh, I didn't uh, look it into it myself. I have quite a heavy course loot, as you can imagine. Mm-hmm. So, um, not to mention writing my books and the like. So, how would one? Theoretically, get rid of a possessed house. There is a number of things that people believe. Um, helping an entity come to terms with their own death. Uh, perhaps, perhaps what caused them, drove them to torment in the first place. Um, offering some peace or solace. Uh, showing your uh, Safe presence is 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 important, but I believe that's one that's one way to help the 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 long term stored emotional energy in in places like that. Is it it needs to, it's like a um, it's like it's like a volcano, right? It, it lies right. it lies dormant for so long, and eventually there there needs to be a release. Um, we can be conduits to that other place, to that world, and, and, and help to to facilitate that, to help um, so that it's not so explosive like a volcano, but rather it's like uh, taking pressure off the line so it's not so explosive, and so that eventually, in, instead of uh, an explosion, rather, you have a, a gentle, a gentle uh, helping I- into the afterlife. Right. And what if, theater, theoretically, because I don't know anything about, you know, ghosts and spirits and stuff. What if they don't want to leave? What do you do then? That's quite difficult. Um, some would say to get the church involved. Um, exorcisms and the like. Okay. Um, you might even be able to... Uh, speak to the church about such a thing um, I know that they have a, 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 a they, are, they are they are an authority on the subject in their own right um, but if they don't want to leave um, it's difficult there are, there are places all over the world of, of people who don't want to leave uh, who are clinging on to what remnants of life that they still have if we're ever stuck in a uh, 
cycle of... Limbo. Yes. Got it. Yeah. I had a question in the name. Sorry, I'm writing notes. <laughs> trying no, to remember I everything. I, I don't remember what I was going to ask. Uh... You said you, um, you, you've been called in as a bit of an expert on some some other hauntings around um hmm. is there any anything you do to to protect yourself perhaps well i think um to protect myself well um again it depends on who you're speaking to yeah, of the the yeah. church, for instance, would say, bring a crucifix, or bring holy water. Um, I find, um, I find the thing that helps me the most is to uh, just go in and 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 listen and receive. I've I've been in the fortunate position in that I have not a, had a um, violent encounter with the supernatural. But I, um, I've seen it in my own right. Um, I find that the more at peace you are, it's it's almost like a mirror, right? You, you, spirits reflect back what you're putting out there. So, like, say, if 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 we uh, say if if I went into in there and I was very uh angry hmm. if I was upset about something the spirits would reflect that yes okay uh, think of it like this um, have you ever walked into a place where you know that there's been a fight yes right, and, and, and two people who have uh, gotten into a room and and you can feel the tension when you walk in the room like no word is said no action is taken but but you can walk in you can feel it yeah I've been same. There. yeah it's the same principle at play they can right. feel that that tension we we mm -hmm. whether we intend to or not we are putting something off okay and they will receive it and reflect it back. Possibly even think that you're angry at them. Right? Right. Makes sense. Yeah. Do you know guys like have a, an inside vet? I'm sorry? Uh, this dog sound really, really uh, close. <laughs> well, do you have any more questions for me? I have uh, other classes that I do need to attend to. Um, anything else I can do to help? I personally can't think of any right now, but if you have a card... Yeah, as I said, you have a card. Can uh, we get your number? Absolutely. And um, more questions about the, the opera? Yes, and he smiles. Um... I am here to help in an advisory fashion as much as I possibly can. Um, he gives you a card, and it just says Emil Yero, um, and it says um, um, ah, there we go, Associate Professor of Abnormal Psychology, and then underneath it says Parapsychologist, and it has his phone number. Um, for you to be able to reach him. All right, cool. I was going to stand up, shake his hand. Thank you for everything. We might be in touch. Absolutely. Yes. And he'll mm -hmm. kind of like uh, go to, to some different papers and kind of like start working on like grading and stuff like that. 
one small thing before sure. we go. Um, you, you said sort of how the like spirits may reflect back your own feelings. Um, what kind of what kind of manifestations could happen if one was, say, you're terrified? I think it would depend. But, um, depend on the spirit in, in, uh, in question, right? If, um, for instance, if it is a child, they might be scared as well, and you might see them, you might see the best flicker, something almost translucent out of the corner of your eye, the corner of your eye down the hallway, right? Mm-hmm. But, um, that's how a child would react. But if it was a, uh, something more malevolent, perhaps, um, they might relish that. Be at peace. Cool. Thank, thank, thank you very much for your help. You're very welcome. Yeah, you're very helpful. Thank you. Very welcome. Yes, you're very welcome. And he uh, will go back to doing his paperwork. Okay. Um, all right. Our final group, Butch and uh, Booch and Ava. Um, did Vindo really just be our be again? What a what a, did he what really? a guy. What a guy. <laughs> uh, Ava, um, why don't I let you take the lead then? Um, you are... And he'll eventually come. Um, so you guys are going to the county seat. Mm-hmm. That is the plan. Um, where uh, I imagine you would be able to um, to walk in. Um, it's a government building, like the one you see right there. Um, it looks a, a little bit run down, but not terrible. Uh, Vindo, good, awesome. You're back. We just started doing your stuff. It's a sleepy little building, and it um, you would walk in and you see that it deals mostly in parking tickets, zoning laws, and building permits. Um, oh, uh, what would you like to do? Where would you like to go? Is there anybody at the front desk? Yeah, I imagine that there is a receptionist. Uh, it's a older man looks to be kind of maybe even like a volunteer he's like yes yeah, so how how can i help you hello um so my name is butch um i'm trying to go through and look at purchasing uh, a bit of property in town mm. and i'd like to go through and see if there is um like the uh the original foundation you know the original blueprints of the house and everything like that Yes, you would like to speak to, and he kind of like goes through like a Rolodex that's right there. And he just looks okay. at you and he goes, everything being electronic, good old paper stands the day. And he just kind of like gives you a little nudge. Um, you're going to want to speak to the clerk, Anthony Freeman. He is on the, uh, oh, he's actually in the basement. Yes. He's in the basement. All right. Yes. It's, it's probably the best place to keep, you know, all that paper. So. Absolutely. Well, I he- appreciate the uh, the information. Thank you very much. Hmm. You're welcome. And so uh, uh, you go, you walk down uh, to the basement, I'm assuming? Um, I'm going to make sure that um, Ava's coming too. Uh-huh. Uh, you walk down, it, it is a kind of like dank atmosphere. Um, and you see a young guy there looks to be in his kind of like mid twenties, uh, early twenties, something like that. And he goes, Oh, um, hi. Um, yes, I suppose you're looking for, uh, the ba- the, the bathroom is that way. And then he just kind of. No, actually, I'm looking for Anthony 
Freeman? Uh, oh, that's me. Oh, yes. well, <laughs> there we go. How are huh. you doing today, mate? Oh, great. Somebody somebody who needs help aside from looking where the bathroom is. Yes, how can I help you? Um, so I'm actually looking at purchasing some uh, property here, and I wanted mm -hmm. to take a look at the uh, the blue, the original blueprints, any of the modifications that have been done, uh, any of the renovations that has been had, make sure all the um, property or the uh, shoot, what are they called? All of the um, deeds, all titles. the deeds and the permits that are actually up to date and in order. Oh, it's perfectly reasonable. Um, yes, um, well, uh, let me do this. Uh, so first off, let me paint the scene a little bit better. The carpet is, um, short, clearly dirty, and this kind of, like, burnt orange color. It's clear this place hasn't had an update since, like, the 1970s. Um, in fact, as you walk through, like, just on the outside, you see that the county seat has kind of fallen into, dar uh, disrepair. While it seems like everything else in the city is fine and looks good, you know, this place doesn't really look like it's in the best of shape. And so, you know, okay. you've got like wood paneling on the walls, maybe like an old huge clock that, you know, de definitely looks like it's seen better days. Um, <coughs> ah, so um, it is going to take me. Uh, 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 so w w you are you're looking for um, you're looking for these papers, correct? Correct. Okay. Awesome. Well, um, let me go ahead and get to it. Um, do you just give him like an address? Is that what you do? Yeah, I give him the address. All well, right. This is the address that I'm looking at. So then he, you know, takes it. You see that there's kind of like a like a counter we'll between the two. Also give him of you. like two. Or ad like two or three addresses that are like Celiac Walk is definitely one of them. But based off of what that number is, I'm going to go through and give him some other ones that are near that. Just so it's not like I'm just looking for this one. I'm looking for more than just one to make the story a bit more crazy. Yeah. Right. Well, I mean, yeah, to I make want it more on the murder house. On the murder house. Just it. the murder house. <laughs> So Just make it look house. more, more, <laughs> more believable, house. more, Tell me you know. About the murder house. Okay. Um, oops. All righty. So he um kind of like takes his uh like cufflink out, rolls up his sleeves because he's at a counter takes another one off, rolls up his sleeves. He like takes a, a hand. He just kind of like rubs his uh, forehead. And he's like, all right, I can do this. All right, I got this. I really wish I had my coffee today. God damn. And you he help. Um, do, do I want help? Yeah, it looks like, like, do you, do you want help with the paperwork? I'm really good at it. Um, roll me a persuade check. Um, as you say that, he opens the door behind him, and it is at least floor to ceiling file cabinets, like 28 of them. Um, <laughs> that just looks so old. Um, maybe even before uh, World War II. Okay. And he uh, looks at you and he says, oh, yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> Booch is going to like crack his knuckles, like take off his coat, set it down, roll up his own sleeves. And then just like do some, some finger exercises. It's like, I quick. was made for this I moment. Was made for this. <laughs> this is what I was born to do. <laughs> Uh, and he's awesome. gonna like dive in. Like, um, although do you need um, Ava here to yeah go, go and... Yeah, I was gonna say he was just gonna go. Okay, what do you want me to do? 
Well, anything that's important, we'll, uh, we're just going to use the tiny scanner on your phone. And then that way we don't have to go through and like, that way we can take copies with us there without taking the originals. Got it. And he's going to look to Anthony and be like, is that acceptable? That is, that is that, yes, yes. <laughs> that way it makes your job easier and it makes, you know, everything still, everything is where it needs to be. He gives you a thumbs up, like, I will gladly accept your help because this is an awful, awful task. Um, and uh, so first off, I'm going to need a bureaucracy check. Which I, or a history, actually, the agent's, Actually, it just says you need it. it. doesn't say you have to roll it. Why don't you roll it anyway, just for funsies? Bureaucracy? Yes. Just for funsies. Just for funsies. It'll just decay. I'm going to roll mine as well. Just Go for ahead. Funsies. Yeah. Go ahead and roll your bureaucracy just for funsies. Could have been oh, worse. That is so close. <laughs> to 86. <laughs> 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 she lights the whole room on fire. <laughs> No! <laughs> Historical documents. Electronic things win, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, you realize that this is uh, uh, even with your abilities and at work, this is going to be a Herculean undertaking that is going to take you maybe sixteen hours of work. Oh, this, is, this, this is like a multiple a day thing to be able to do this. Um, so the reason I'm saying that is because um, that's going to be multiple days work. Mm -hmm. And so no, that's just one day's work because this is an all nighter thing. If, if that's what he's doing, absolutely. You will. You will Dude, take. You can't pull all nighters in this game. You 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 <laughs> could take an all nighter, but you'll take a minus twenty percent unless you start like doing um, taking some type of um, coffee, coffee cocaine, cocaine, chemical uh, assistance. <laughs> yes, he's yes. gonna pull out his uh, his hip flash Which of to... Red Bull. To describe how that works, is you like take a stimulant. I'm pretty sure you roll like a one d four, and that's how many hours you pass off. So it doesn't yeah. even do that good. Fuck. You gotta right. sleep. Wow. No, this is definitely gonna be an all nighter thing for him because okay, it gets rough. <laughs> that's really fair. Good. I like you roleplay your character, and I like oh, it. Yeah. It's yeah. It's gonna be real it sad when the police shuts up and kicks you out. <laughs> <laughs> I, I gotta leave. No, you're gonna stay right here until this is done. We don't start a job and then quit it. We are not quitters. Okay, so here's here uh, here's what I'm going to say though, um, because your friends would want to at the very least, like everybody would probably want to check in after they mm -hmm. did their thing, and so knowing that you, I think you may have been under the assumption initially, like I'm going to come here, get some information, and then I'm going to go back. It's clear that this task is going to take a lot more time. If that's the case, I would probably call. Um, actually, I don't know if I have your phone numbers. I'm sure we would have. It's okay. I think stuff. Ava's got everybody's. That's numbers. fair. I'd be like, Ava, can you please <laughs> let the other ones know? This is going to be like he's gonna lick his finger and like hold it up like you would test air. Probably <laughs> between a sixteen to eighteen hour uh, endeavor. And Ava's face just drops because she's already bored. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So here's what we're going to do. Um, the, the camera sees um, Booch um, start just like filing through the paperwork. This other guy kind of in back of him filing through paperwork. It is clearly not only is it, um, it's clearly all very disorganized. And a lot of this is like all kinds of stuff um, from all over the years. And so you're trying to root through it and it's just going to be, you know, it's going to be a big job. And so I imagine we see you and you take a big deep breath, you go in 
Ava's looking like they're slack jawed, like, oh my god, are we really going to do this? Imagine um, a world, right, where we'd reconvened a little bit before you did that, and you had maybe some dates to specify, like like death dates or <laughs> something. I know, so right? Easy. It would be so cool. <laughs> so the other thing that we're going to do, so... Where well, you could I'll, call me on your phone? Well, well, trust me, because I kind of got to land the plane, because it's about time for us to finish. <laughs> um, so we it's a montage of sorts. You going through files, the little yellow timer shows up at the very bottom. I think I said it was about 11.30 when um, Linus started, so it'd be that time for everybody else. And so like, we see him filing, and then it's like goes to a shot of uh, Linus talking with the coroner, except it's mostly just the coroner talking, and Linus is just jamming away <laughs> as he's kind of like looking at this body, like checking it out. Um, and then it's like another shot of uh, Constance and Bo talking to this uh, parapsychologist. Um, it's all kind of like going on. And, uh, you know, Constance and Bo eventually like stand up after their conversation, say goodbye to Emil. I imagine they kind of like start walking out of the uh, of the college uh, with some of this just like newfound information and just, you know, kind of stuff that's going on. Right. Um, it's still raining because from everything you guys have told me, it just like never stops raining. It is raining, raining right is now. Well, yeah, I think it's raining here too. Yeah. Like it's so, so it's, uh, heavy. It's loud. It's perfect. Yep. It's raining. Uh, <laughs> to be so, fair, we had blue skies, sun was out and it was like, yeah, snowing hard. So, um, so you guys kind of walk out into the rain, bundling up. Bo gets in her car, drives Linus eventually like finishes. And he's like looking at this thing. So, quizzically just because it doesn't make any god dang sense um booch is still just filing through the paperwork and you see like the little yellow clock at the very bottom of the the screen if again if this is a movie it's just like 12 30 one seconds keep ticking um and ava's in the background with her feet up on the desk scrolling for her phone looking forward as anything Absolutely. Like to be fair, Booch has got like those those rubber thimbles that are on your hands oh, for your God. fingertips. Absolutely. So you can go through and he's got his messenger bag like out and open and is like tagging things with like the little sticky notes for like colors for this goes here, this goes here, this goes here, this goes here. Yeah. Like dates and times. So he's trying to go through and not only and like find this, but like organize stuff as well Man, what if I because can that's my neighbor's that's... laying on the desk knees up, <laughs> having a nap why did I come here why did I do this <laughs> oh lord why did I do this um okay so and that is going to be where we end our scene for the day now what we're going to do a uh, couple of parting notes the next time we play Instead of me doing a recap, what we're going to do instead is I'm not going to do a recap because not a whole lot has happened outside of your like we made the decision. You guys made the decision to like grab some things. I'll talk about the antique dealer a lot or a little bit. But then the most of the recap is going to be you guys at the table together, however that looks just sharing information. Okay. And I think, I think it, it, it makes okay. the most sense because yeah, you're going to yeah. need to share that information anyway. So that'll be the recap. Um, Hole in and, the wall diner. Yeah. yeah and then, lunch. and we can, yeah, we can take it from there for what you guys would like to do next. So that's, that's the first thing. Cool. The second thing I wanted to bring up as well is that um, the UK's time change one hour forward is this weekend. Yep. So, um, First off, is everybody good to play Monday and Wednesday next week? Yeah, mm -hmm. should be. Hey. Cool. All right, yeah. so then that, that'll be the plan. Um, so what that means is we're going to be going back to our normal time of playing for, for us in the States. Because the UK, it's, it's 7 o'clock no matter what for you guys. But for us, we started playing an hour later than normal. So to be clear, and this will be for our viewers as well, um, our next uh, session will be 11 o'clock uh, Pacific. 
12 o'clock mountain. Poor Willie. <laughs> Get up in the morning. Oh. Ah, oh, the pain. Yeah, I can do that. <laughs> and then uh, it'll be I'm 1 o'clock uh, uh, central uh, for us. Oh. For me, rather. So we're literally sprawled out over four uh, play time or four time zones. Um, so that's when we'll play next. We'll continue our story and we'll uh, go from there. Um, because this is going to be like a big job, the, the 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 paperwork and all that, we can decide exactly how we want to do it. Like if Booch just takes the lead and he's got people helping him, right? Um, that's a possible way to cut things in uh, time. Um, or if he's just like doing that while you guys are doing other things, that makes sense as well. Yeah, unfortunately, Constance wants to do her own thing. Yeah. Um, Booch understands that nobody likes this part, and he's, he is more than willing to, like... Like this be his thing. Like, this is his thing. He's like, this is what yes. I'm good at. This is... Like, I will take this bullet for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> The metaphorical bullet. Right. Um, <laughs> but only now, this one. Yeah, Ava's looking for the first excuse to get out of there. Absolutely. I, I could just imagine him, like, picking out one of our laptops and starting playing, like, games. <laughs> <laughs> just going back to Atlas. Just a pastime. <laughs> oh, guys, we're going to live play doing uh, paperwork and looking for things. Hey, Count Bobula. Um, so, cool. All right, so that's the plan, y'all. Um, Monday. We'll resume our game. We'll go from there. Um, why don't you all have uh, say goodbye to our, our viewers, and we'll go ahead and call it a game. Bye, bye, bye viewers. Bye, bye. Thank you for watching us do paperwork. Yes. <laughs> the exciting part of Delta Green. Right. The paperwork. Wow. The I, I love the investigation shit. This is, this is so much fun. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad.